Okay. Hey, I'm Miss Fothery, and I'm going to be um, demonstrating hair, skin, and nails for you today. So when we're doing a, an assessment, this usually falls in with other systems, but I'm going to focus on what you do specifically for hair, skin, and nails. So we're going to inspect and palpate the skin. We're going to inspect and palpate the, sca the scalp and the hair, and we're going to inspect facial and body hair as we go through the systems. And then last, we'll look at the nails, okay? So first, we're gonna start off with general survey. Again, we always start off every assessment just looking generally at your patient. And so what we're looking for is color and pigmentation. Do we have the consistent color and the consistent pigmentation throughout all of her skin? By the way, we're using um, a hospital gown and she has on clothes but for the examination of the skin, a perfect time to do it would be like when you're given a bed bath and we have our patient uncovered or when you're listening to the chest, you can also be looking at the skin. So, but for video purposes, she's gonna have her clothes on and I'll just demonstrate. Um, also, we look for any odors. Um, so this patient as well has good hygiene <laughs> and um, we're gonna do the top to bottom. So we'll start with her scalp and sometimes I'll use the end of a long q-tip just to separate the hair and so you'll inspect and palpate the scalp um, we're going to section off I'm going to remove your ponytail if you don't uh -huh. mind we're going to section off little sections here and we're just looking at the scalp what I'm looking for is um, any intact skin we hope everything's intact if we have any lesions or anything like that, we're also looking for nits, um, for lice. I hope you don't have any lice today that I find. Um, <laughs> we're also gonna be looking for um, the texture of the skin itself. She's got a really great texture. It's um, well cleaned, it's moist, it's um, not dry. So that shows us that she's well hydrated. Um, so we'll look all over in every section Okay, and then I'm not gonna put your hair back up for you. Okay, then we're gonna fine. move down from the head to the neck area. I am gonna look at the face. Um, what I'm looking for here is hair distribution on her eyebrows and her eyelashes. They look good. Um, looking for color changes. I don't see anything. She's got a small pigmentation right here. I would note that in my documentation. Um, you can kind of estimate or you can use a millimeter um ruler this one looks about four to five millimeters just a darker pigmentation i would call that a uh, macule macule means flat papule means um raised so you have to know those descriptive terms for your documentation then we're going to move down the neck area she's got another little area here this is a papule reddish in color about three to four millimeters you would note that in your documentation and you would just work your way down. Now on the back, she's got a few freckles and I would turn her, um, can you turn around for yeah. me? I'm just gonna get you to turn towards the camera. There you go. So I would have her undress from here and I would look over all the areas of her back. She has a small scratch right here and um, I would measure that and note that. And just FYI, we are looking for signs of interpersonal violence so any bruising things like this that are scratched or um and especially underwear clothes would hide them we need to take special note of that and then we need to talk to the patient about that okay but everything else looks good she's got a normal distribution of freckles you can turn around we're also looking at the temperature of each area I and mean, you're going to use the back of your hands and you're gonna just kind of get the temperature in each area. And she is nice and warm. I'm gonna go down your legs too. Again, this is gonna be without clothes on. Okay, so a normal temperature would be warm. Now, if it's exceptionally hot in your exam room, the environment's different, it's gonna reflect that environment or if your patient's very, very nervous, they can have some you know, anxiety and perspiration from that. 
Um, another thing that we have to note is any kind of tattoos. So if she has any tattoos, I'm gonna be very specific in my documentation of that tattoo, um, what it is, the measurement of it, the skin surrounding the tattoo, especially if it's fresh. We need to also make sure she's aware of problems with tattooing, um, people using non-sterile equipment and you know, HIV and hepatitis um, risk for that. Um, on her abdomen especially, I'm not gonna expose your abdomen, but when we're examining the abdomen, especially if this is a woman that's had a baby, you may see some stray or stretch marks. Um, this is also common in adolescents when they have a really fast growth, um, rapid growth, they will have sometimes some stretch marks around their breast area or around their hips where they've had this sudden weight gain. So you can mark that. <clears throat> Um, mobility and skin turgor is this is um, exceptionally important and especially in the elderly it will tell us about hydration and we want to do it right here around the clavicle and so we'll pinch up just a little bit of skin and you see how elastic hers is it will just go right back down now tinting is when I'll show you on my hand because I do have tinting so when you do this and it stays up like a tint um, over the clavicle, then that is a, a sign that we need to be a little bit concerned about with dehydration. So she has really good skin turgor, and I would note elastic skin turgor. Thickness is something that we look at too. It, it goes along with aging, and so the skin gets a little thinner after 30 and continuing on until the elderly years. Skin gets really, really thin. Now, let me see your hands. It's normal for the skin to be a little thicker on the hands and the bottoms of, of the feet. And if this was a really hard worker, manual labor, you might notice calluses on the fingers and that's kind of a normal sign, okay. Um, let me see, as far as the nails, let's talk about the nails. So we wanna look at hygiene. <laughs> I see you've got a little dark spot right mm -hmm. there. Okay, so you want to look at hygiene, and generally these nails are well, well kept. Um, you want to look at the shape of the nails. You don't want any clubbing. Um, so, And then you also want to look at the, um, are they ridged, are they broken, um, you know, the normal health of the nail. When you press on the nail, you should get a little blanching. We call that capillary refill. We want you to have less than two to three seconds of refill and those look good. And the nail bed looks a little pink. Sometimes if we have brown skin color, you can get a little yellow under the nails. Um, sometimes there might be some white lines that um, appear in those nails and that's quite normal. Look at these. Um, as we get older, uh, your toes have nail polish on them. Mm -hmm. um, as we get older, the nail beds get thicker. And so in the elderly, you might see really, really thick nails and they can look pretty grotesque sometimes. They grow in a weird way. We have to be very careful about the diabetics in their nails. So um, usually they get clipped by a di diabetic educator. Special concerns that we have, if you have a lesion, have you had any moles pop up that are new or? Okay, um, watch for that and have your patient tell you if there's any changes to any existing moles or if they have new moles pop up and we usually say they need to be bigger than our eraser or bigger than about five or six millimeters for us to be kind of concerned about. Um, we need to use a good light source. This room's pretty well lit if I were in an exam room that didn't have a great light source, I would get like an additional lamp and carry your uh, millimeter ruler and something to part the hair with. Um, let's see what else. Oh, on those skin lesions, if we do find a skin lesion, we wanna note the size and color of that skin lesion, the shape, usually the ones we don't worry about are, are round or oval. The ones that we do have irregular borders and they look um, sometimes elevated and gnarly around the edges. <laughs> they don't match, they're asymmetrical. 
Um, and if what kind of characteristic that lesion has. Is it fluid filled? Is it hard? Is it raised? All of those things. And if there's a pattern of more than one. Um, as far as age related skin issues that I think you need to know about, infants, when you're in, examining an infant, you may notice some dark patches on African American babies that are called Mongolian spots. That's normal. It's important to note that. Um, the characteristics and where they're located. On adolescent skin, you may see more oiliness as they're going through the hormonal changes and that's normal. As I said before, you may see some stretch marks as they grow in certain areas. And then again, on the elderly, um, you may see some, uh, lay people call them liver spots. They may be red and raised, little areas on their skin. Their skin gets thinner. It's more likely to tear. So we need to be concerned about that. Um, I think that's it. Thank you.